dexamethasone or prednisone? Which one's better? Which one should you take? What should you know about dexamethasone and prednisone to help you decide what to take? Well, normally that's your doctor's decision, but I wanted to make a video about the differences and similarities between dexamethasone and prednisone because one of my long-term followers and collaborators asked, hey, I just switched from prednisone to dexamethasone and I wanted to know the difference. I'm breathing so much better now with my asthma. So let's talk about dexamethasone and prednisone and what you need to know. So both of these are glucocorticoids. They're in the exact same drug class. They're really, really similar to each other. They're just a few molecules different. They're both powerful steroids used to reduce inflammation and suppress the immune system. They're both commonly used for autoimmune conditions, allergies, and even cancer treatments. But there are some key differences to know about. I've personally taken both. So not only can I talk about this as a board certified doctor of pharmacy, but I can talk from my own personal experience having taken both. So one of the easiest to notice differences between dexamethasone and prednisone is how potent they are. That's how many milligrams does it take to get an effect. And so with dexamethasone, it is very potent. You only need a teeny tiny bit to get the same effect that you would need for a much larger amount of prednisone. Specifically, all of the steroids are always compared to hydrocortisone because that's the steroid that is closest to our naturally occurring hormone cortisol. And so prednisone is four times more potent than hydrocortisone versus dexamethasone, which is 25 times more potent than hydrocortisone. Something close to 0.75 milligrams of dexamethasone is the same thing as five milligrams of prednisone. So what kind of tablet sizes are available? Dexamethasone tablet sizes are 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1.5, 2, 4, and 6 milligrams. Whereas prednisone comes in 1, 2.5, 5, 10, 20, and 50 milligram tablets. I've had to take up to 60 milligrams of prednisone, but one time my doctor prescribed 40 of dexamethasone. That's 10 of the four milligram tablets I had to swallow all at once every day for four days. What is the equivalent of 40 milligrams of dexamethasone to prednisone? It's 250 or maybe even 266 milligrams of prednisone that I was taking per day for four days. That is an extremely high atomic sized dose, like not atomic sized, atomic bomb impact dose. I have a bleeding disorder called ITP and my body was actively bleeding and my doctors wanted to give me every chance to stop my autoimmune disease from getting worse. And it's evidence-based, that's a thing that they often do, but it was humongous and I felt awful after. And that's because of the next thing I'm about to share, which is the duration of action or half-life. Dexamethasone lasts much longer than prednisone with a duration of action somewhere between 36 and 72 hours compared to prednisone's duration of 18 to 22 hours. So dexamethasone can leave effects for three to five to who knows how many days after, whereas typically prednisone wears off and is completely gone from your body in about a day. And that's probably be related to their chemical structure. Dexamethasone has two key molecular changes compared to the prednisone molecule. First, there's a fluorine atom at the nine alpha position of the steroid rings and a methyl group at the C16 position. These structural differences contribute to dexamethasone's higher potency, longer duration of action, and reduced mineralocorticoid effects compared to prednisone. Now, what is that? I'll get to that in a minute, but first, first I'm gonna explain what you'd use them for in comparison to the other. Now that we know that dexamethasone is so much more potent and longer acting versus prednisone, it's more intermediate. So dexamethasone is ideal for acute, severe situations like me nearly bleeding to death or my friend having severe asthma and longer lasting suppression of inflammation is needed. But prednisone is the go-to. It's prescribed way more often than dexamethasone. It's the typical thing that a doctor will prescribe for rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and these long chronic conditions who need prednisone long-term. Whereas dexamethasone is often used for acute things like brain swelling, cancer, 
severe inflammation. Both medications work wonders. Both medications have saved my life. But because dexamethasone is stronger and works longer, it's reserved for acute situations. Another one of which is COVID-19. It was the first drug proven to save people's lives, whereas prednisone never quite got that distinction. So back to that big fancy term I threw out there. There's two main receptors in the body for prednisone. There's the glucocorticoid receptor and the mineralocorticoid receptor. Let's play, play Pac-Man. These are two places where the prednisone can go and have an action and the body will do a cascade of things once it's received. And then there's the mineralocorticoid receptor. And the difference is dexamethasone never goes to the mineralocorticoid receptor, but both go to the glucocorticoid receptor. This makes a difference because side effects that come from the glucocorticoid receptor are shared by both. But those only in the mineralocorticoid receptor are unique to prednisone. So if you're hearing the name of this receptor, it's mineral corticoid. So it's things to do with minerals and salt specifically, the salt balance in your body, the amount of sodium, the amount of potassium and water and how your kidneys work, how much sodium you're holding onto, how much potassium you're excreting in urine leads to how much water you're retaining, which is related to how high your blood pressure gets. None of those effects are going to happen with dexamethasone to nearly the same extent because of how potent dexamethasone is strictly for the glucocorticoid receptor and not for the mineralocorticoid receptor. So here's some side effects that are more common with dexamethasone. Psychiatric side effects, mania, depression, psychosis. Dexamethasone's high potency and long duration make it more likely to cause severe mood changes including euphoria, mania, and insomnia. Psychiatric side effects from dexamethasone can sometimes feel more extreme than with prednisone. Muscle weakness or myopathy, steroid-induced myopathy, is usually worse with dexamethasone than prednisone. Suppression of the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the stress hormone adrenal system, is usually worse with the dexamethasone because of how long lasting it is. That increases the risk for adrenal insufficiency after stopping it. So beware of the side effects of the symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. And check out this video that explains what I'm talking about in more depth. And finally, the risk of hyperglycemia or high blood sugar is worse with dexamethasone than prednisone. And it might be because of dexamethasone's longer action. Both drugs cause this, but it can be worse with dexamethasone. So some side effects that are more common with prednisone than dexamethasone include, like I mentioned already, fluid retention and swelling, leading to edema, weight gain, high blood pressure. For me, that was swollen ankles and swollen knees and overall puffiness. Maybe that's where the moon face comes from. Electrolyte imbalances, low potassium and higher sodium levels which can worsen heart disease and other cardiovascular issues. Number three, worse in prednisone than in dexamethasone is bone loss or osteoporosis. And that's usually because people are taking prednisone longer term than dexamethasone, which can lead to greater cumulative bone loss over time. And number four, gastrointestinal effects. Prednisone is more likely to cause acid reflux, stomach irritation, or even ulcers particularly in higher doses, long-term use, or as a drug interaction between prednisone and ibuprofen. So what about differences in Cushingoid features like moon face, buffalo hump, and weight gain, especially in the belly area? There's not much research showing a difference in these, unfortunately. It really depends on the dose you're taking and how long you're taking it. The longer you take it and the higher the dose, the more likely you are to have a round moon face, a potential buffalo hump that is a deposit of fat that can get, make the skin feel really tight and even painful, and then big belly from the prednisone weight gain. What about immunosuppression? Both drugs are designed to turn down the immune response, but potentially dexamethasone leads to more severe infections as a possible side effect because of the duration that it is suppressing the immune system. 
And prednisone is still immunosuppressive, but it's generally used at lower doses than the equivalent of dexamethasone. And so even though maybe the risk over time, because people are generally on prednisone longer term, may be the same, but generally the shorter duration, there's an increased risk of infections from dexamethasone compared to prednisone. The final type of side effect is withdrawal symptoms. This is when you go off one of these steroids and you feel awful because you've been dependent on them and now you're in withdrawal. It's more likely to happen with dexamethasone compared to prednisone because of that longer duration of action, your body's having a harder time recovering. And so you may experience severe fatigue, low blood pressure, nausea and vomiting, sleep changes, mood changes. And so this is why no matter which drug you're taking, you taper off unless your doctor tells you not to. Like my doctor said four days of 250 milligram equivalent of prednisone taking dexamethasone. Whew. And then they just went off completely at that point. Wow, that was a tough time. I definitely went into withdrawals. And guess what? They had to put me back on prednisone. So how do you choose between dexamethasone and prednisone? Well, typically this isn't a choice that you make. This is typically a choice your doctor makes. But let's go back to the principles. It depends on the condition being treated. If it's an acute situation, it's often dexamethasone. If it's a chronic long-term condition, it's often prednisone. The severity of your symptoms. If it's incredibly severe, it's more likely to be dexamethasone. Where if it's less severe and not as life-threatening, it's more likely to be prednisone. The duration of treatment. If you're likely to be on it long-term, you'll probably be put on prednisone compared to dexamethasone for short-term. And finally, your side effect risk. If you have bone loss, diabetes, cardiovascular issues, osteoporosis, those types of things, that may be a factor in which drug you choose. So no matter which one you choose, it's probably going to do something good for you, hopefully, but it does come with side effects. And they might be, they're mostly the same, but there are a few minor differences. And so if you wanna know what you can do to counteract those side effects, just click the link below to download my prednisone checklist. It's available for free, it's a downloadable PDF, and you just click the link below to fill out a form, and I send it immediately directly to you, and it tells you exactly what to do to minimize your side effects, to counteract them if possible, so that you can feel as well as possible while taking these miraculous yet harmful medications. Signing off is Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.